If you want to get stronger in Elden Ring, you need a finger maiden to turn runes into strength. But what if we cut out the middle man, or should I say middle finger, and we're our own finger maiden? Today we unlock the finger's true potential with a build that should be double digits ahead of the others. To watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel. We have a bunch of exclusive videos, a Discord for everyone, and polls to pick the next run. This run won by like 20 votes, so you can really make a difference there. Finally, make sure you like and subscribe. The subscribe button is right next to our channel name, and the like button looks like a big... The game literally forces you to grab a finger at the start. It's like this is the ideal way to play the game. We're starting off as a hero, which might seem weird. Isn't a finger maiden probably a faith build? Well, none of the two finger spells can do any damage. There's healing, defensive buffs, and rejection. I think we'll use some of the defensive buffs that only require 10 total faith, which we'll hit with the Godric's Great Rune, but I still want to bamboozle chat, so, um... What weapon? Well, no, we're using... This is like... This is... This is two finger spells... Cast or pass. Uh, we're gonna go find all of the the two fingers spells, and uh, we'll use the ones that do damage. And it'll be good. Wait, two fingers. You don't think two fingers has offensive spells? Why are people saying there's no offensive two finger spells? For real? Um. Oh boy, I can't believe i can't believe you all fell for it again a classic ruse oh but the two finger spells are really good if you like using them you're a special little baby who's brave smart and good you're a good person for using two finger spells so good and pretty and smart and I, I just want to tell you, I love you. Speaking of people I love, let's save Alex from a hole. Let's get physical for better physics for charged attacks and stamina than we can imagine slipping a finger in in Fort Height. Deck this one in the bag, then we head to the Dragon Barrow and do the same thing in Fort Faroth. Finger goes in, finger comes out, nobody gets hurt, it's smooth and fun. On the way to the Nomadic Merchant, we get some somber stones for later, then we get taken to the home of the two fingers, the Round Table Hold. Now let's do things a little less smooth for the bad dragon, because we buy the spiked cestus and start with fists, not fingers. That's a great way to make a bloody, painful mess, even on a big dragon. But it will help us ease into the build with a lot more vigor, and you should always ease in if you're going to finger. Watch me. I'll do the fingering. We're just running up to Altus as fast as possible, which means Lernia warping through all the way to the Dectus Lift, yay! But Altus is just the first step, because now we have to go up Mount Gelmir. Lots of traveling for this one early, and if you're like me, you're looking out the car window and moving your fingers like little legs to make them run on the ground outside. That might mean you're pretty cool. Our weapon is in the Gelmnir Hero's Grave, and this is why we need that early vigor. After bamboozling the first chariot with our sick movement skill, we have to walk through magma. But we can't be part of the turbo team until NG+, so we have to... Walk! Slowly! Our reward is a finger in the bottom, and I am excited to see how this feels. I experimented with this little finger in the all weapons run, and despite only using it against one boss, it felt really good. A little weird at first, but really good. The escape from the chariot on the way out wasn't even close. Oh, hey, y'all want some lore from the description? Bludgeon made from an enormous finger, sheathed in several heavy rings, thought to have been cut from an ancestor of the Finger Creeper. Some life yet remains in this legacy of an ancient act of blasphemy, as evidenced by the barely perceptible warmth it still exudes. So it's a warm, thick finger that wiggles around on its own. Interesting. Next step of the kit is way easier to get. We just buy Magic Fortification, Cure Poison, and Fire Fortification from Corn in the Round Table Hold. He doesn't sell the Lightning Fortification until he goes to Altus, so let's make sure we don't forget that. For some reason, the Holy One is in a Beetle in the Weeping Peninsula. We'll grab that when we go to upgrade the Flask, for sure. Not gonna forget that one. Now we'll take this finger into Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave, or as a German might say, put the finger in mein Shaft. The stone diggers get pulverized by the strike damage, and Claw Flick is such a funny Ash of War, but it's also such a solid one. It knocks over humanoid enemies, does 30 stance damage, and massive regular damage. Little underappreciated thing about it, as the finger engorges, there's a tiny shove hitbox that has a bit of stance damage on its own and will stun humanoids as well, making them get hit by the follow-up. More on that later. For now, the Crystallion is so weak to the finger that he just can't get up off his 
his back and we finished him off in less than a minute. That's Sombrastones 1 through 3 in the bag, but for the 4 we need to buy it from EG. That should be strong enough to get our drift. On the way we take care of the Eye of Sauron with the 3 Stooges attack. Poke him in the eye! Bike next, but we're not here for the fingerprint set, which is good, he doesn't drop it here. This is where we see the power of fingering on an NPC. That little bump stuns him, locking him into the second hit. In the church we can get the Finger Maiden set. Hey, Finger Maiden. Don't mind if I do! From the description, the maidens live to serve a chosen tarnished, sharing their guidance and wisdom of the two fingers. The guidance of grace would ensure that the pair be brought together, or at least such was the promise long ago. So the guidance of grace used to point out where a maiden was. Now it points where all the bosses are that want to turn you into pudding. Cool. I miss the good old days. Let's dip a finger into Bogart's soup. It works just as good here. Hey Bogart, don't you hate it when someone puts a finger in your soup? Ow! Well, Boggart, I tasted it, and I gotta say, it's not just tasty, it's finger licking good. Oh, you're making prawns? I prefer chicken fingers. Uh, chicken fingers? I hope you trim the talons. Ryle will bring us to Volcano Manor, and then the fingers can really start working. We're grabbing the Somber 6 and 5 from Volcano Manor Town. I love how much easier Somber weapons are to upgrade. Currently working on another long run that got way too long. That's actually several runs, and they all use standard weapons. It's a nightmare. Little Snake Dude ends up being a boss by the elevator, though. Our armor provides basically zero defense. Even the whip hits us pretty hard, and it's weirdly hard to dodge. Abandoned Cave is a stinky hole, but our finger will still do well in there, even if we get poisoned on the way in because the game said our jump didn't count. The flick fully bullies the first clean rot knight, and then we get thrown up on, so now we're rotted and poisoned. Kids, this is why you have a butt ton of vigor. Golden Scarab acquired, now we can get properly paid. Margit doesn't even get to start his phase two dialogue. Our plus six finger messes him up so bad. I guess that's like a slap with a thumb in your eye as well, right? Gossip stock gets fingered and we get headshot by the ballista, making me think our defense is even worse than it is. It's not that bad. It's just very, very bad. Confirmed when we get hit by the next ballista and it's fine. The danger path actually is dangerous today. We almost die when a bird won't let us get the grace. It's a bird! I know it's a bird! I'm on the phone! Godric time, I'm playing aggressive and just going for the flicks. Three is enough to get a break. Each flick has 30 stance pressure, which is solid. Phase two, we flick him again, and it's basically over. Once you know how Godric works in phase two, it really just makes this whole thing a joke. With that done, we can activate the Great Rune, which is more like an okay rune on this build. We need strength, vigor, and endurance. Everything else doesn't really contribute much. Later, we're going to swap to the Radon Great Rune. It's better for builds that are fully built already. We also forget to actually activate the Great Rune for a long time. Time to fight an actually hard boss the Gonskin Noble. Why? He's fast, and he has 35% strike resistance, meaning that after two stance breaks, he's only at like 40% of his HP down. He goes for the rollout, and we get him locked on a column. We can flick through that, but flick is not a good punish option against any of the other attacks. Yikes. We got rolled out again and die. Attempt to, I'm playing a little more carefully, sticking to R1s. I thought we could hit him on the stand-up with the flick, but uh, no. Really, only the rollout can be punished, and you have to get him behind a column first. He locks us in against a corner. We literally really can't move and die again. Jank death, I don't feel too bad about that one. Next go, it starts so bad, I just stand still for him to kill me and then he stops hitting me. Uh, sure, okay. Never stop fighting. Let's fight it out. Worst case scenario, it's practice. The rollout almost kills us again right at the end, but we can heal that off to get hit a few more times and be back down to low health. Rough stuff. Play extra safe. We get the win. It looks like we're heading to Rykard, but we're not fighting him yet. We're grabbing the Stone Sword Key from the Shortcut Path and immediately spending it to open up the Fog Gate. There we'll grab the Dagger Talisman to get better critical hits and have Goober Boy stun lock us together. Oh my god, managed to get out, but it really seems like we're getting all the jank the game has to offer today. Jank will be easier to deal with now that we have a plus nine finger. Nerd Juice, how do you like the finger? Not at all. And Patches, plus nine finger, your thoughts? Also bad. Google Patches getting fingered on your work computer to find out more. We need to find Celevis's goon cave for later, then we can run up to talk to Ronnie and the gang, including Celevis. And like, God, I want to introduce my ring to this guy's skull, but we won't, because it would ruin the Ronnie quest. Worst thing about Ronnie, she stops you from killing Celevis. Sadly, we have to do a little bit of his quest to get the spirit ash, so talk to him, then go to the round table hold, give the potion to Gideon, even though that's the potion that someone wanted to use to turn his dog daughter into a puppet and Gideon's like you sure you want to give it to me you sure you don't want to give it to my daughter we'll flick him later for that after running around the world Selvis finally gives us the finger maiden Theralina spirit ashes from the description a maiden without a tarnished a tarnished without a maiden and yet no guide 
to bring them together. But finally, we come together. Isn't that nice? We're going to level her up next stream. First, we're going to body the Putrid Avatar for the Damage Resistance Physic tier. A plus 9 weapon and 40 Vigor really makes this a joke. But that pickle will last for 3 minutes, so let's see if we can finger the bad dragon while it's still active. With how slow Clawflick is to start up, I was worried we couldn't hit the head with it, but no, it's super easy. This is also the longest hammer, in addition to having a cool-ass Ash of War. Really just pretty great. I guess the only downside is you can't infuse it. We beat Grail with a minute to spare. Since there's another minute, maybe we we could go get the Black Blade Kindred, which is weakest to strike damage. Could it be done? The hat trick? Three bosses, one pickle? Not this time. Yeah, the Black Blade Kindred is still a gargoyle, and those damn spindly legs won't let me in. It's really hard to get a finger between those legs. Maybe we just need a second finger. Theralina, she's our sister, and we're gonna give her some pointers. But before we move on, I want to thank today's sponsor, you. You are an exciting and cool new venture that can help support Two Lock and Mango through our Patreon. Here's the thing, gamers. The Patreon was started for the D&D channel, and then that kind of went... So now, it's mostly for the Elden Ring channel, but because we're kind of transitioning, all the tiers are the same. You can give us a dollar, you can give us $50, whatever you like, however much content you're enjoying from us, and however much money you have to spend, you can spend it on us. There you'll get to vote in polls to decide what video comes out. This video won a poll. If you wanted to see me use jars, you should have been a patron. It was literally like 20 votes. It was so close. There's also exclusive videos you can watch based off of kind of niche characters, but they're whole episodes. It's a whole secret starting class video and there's like five of them now. Quinn, come here. My cat is a patron. Tell them you're a patron. Quinn, tell them about the other, Quinn, Quinn, tell them about the rewards. Okay. You don't have to. Well, she was also going to tell you about the Discord access. Yeah, we have a Discord, and sometimes I get in games of Magic the Gathering spell table with the Discordance. So if you want to use your commander to make me cry, join the Discord, join the Patreon. Seriously, Corey and I wouldn't be able to do this without the support of the Patreon. Thank you so much if you are a Patreon member, and please consider joining the Patreon if you haven't. Now, back to the video. We start stream two by putting a finger in Radon's hole, then use the finger on ourselves. It would have been a little easier if we took the armor off, but this is so thin, it's like we're wearing... Nothing at all! Light some torches and make sure we don't burn our fingers here. Normally, I'd want to go get the moose right now, but because I want to focus on Theralina, she's a very valuable member of the team, we're not doing that. Well, she's on the team. I don't know how valuable she'll be. We're getting the knife, giving it to Ronnie, then diving into the incel river main. They hate fingers, even though it just makes the game more fun for some people, and you don't have to use it if you don't want Want to. Knox, Stella has all the ghost glove warts we need to level up our sister. Our first test with Theralina will be across the Lake of Rot. Believe it or not, the women's religious robes don't give us any immunity. They give us none. Astel wants to shoot us with lasers and smack us all around, but we have the power of sisterhood. Theralina, you wanna help? At all? Dude is only going for bongo drums, but Theralina isn't doming him with the pots to keep the pressure up. Whole lot of hurry up and wait in this fight. Of course, now we gotta bring the finger blaster to Raya Lucari because that's part of all remembrances, I suppose. Coming here with upgraded stuff is so wild. We literally do half the Red Wolf's health with one flick. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Just quit out for Moongrum. He doesn't get to experience the joy of Big Finger. In the Ranala fight, we're actually going to use a spell. Magic Fortification. It'll give us 30% magic resistance. First, we'll bonk the kids, then bash the heck out of Renala. Phase two, I knock her over a couple times. Maybe we don't need to use magic fortification. Oh, wait, yeah, we have no defense. Definitely put that on. We should have put it on at the beginning of the fight because it lasts for two minutes and there's no way this is gonna last for two minutes. But for some reason, I didn't think phase one would go fast. I'll use the same spell against the moose because I think the throw up is magic damage, I think. We don't get to test it. I try not to get hit with it. Is the healing damage magic? Maybe, because I agreed through it and that's just fine for a stance break in the win. Rykard gets hit with the Serpent Hunter because I don't want to do it with the finger. Maybe I could. Flame Fortification would help with the magma. I just don't want to. All that running around has me in the mood for more running around. Let's hit the Weeping Peninsula and upgrade the flasks. Honestly, I think this part is more interesting than Rykard fights are. The flask upgrades just keep coming because we're kicking it old school and going through the capital outskirts this time. A finger going through a skirt sounds fun. It's been a minute since I fought the Draconic Tree 
increase sentinel we turn on the flame fortification for the fireball spam really should have grabbed lightning fortification but oh well i was a little worried this would be bad since i'm kind of rusty on the fight but no hammer good strike damage good extra fire defense good i love it the royal capital is ready to be fingered first the urge tree avatar for the free lord's rune doesn't even get to try to use the elden stars the grave warden duelist duo which isn't a boss despite both of them being bosses on their own is weird put them together they're just two guys and we're having a good time having a good time having a good time godfrey doesn't have any elemental damage so there's no buffs needed other than the buff maiden and the sick finger seriously love a strength build just crank strength crank vigor and crank endurance and you're done be happy let's see if we can keep that pickle active for morgoth by winning in three minutes I'm trying to keep that pressure up but the gaps are too long in between hits we don't get a stance break until phase two but we were fast enough to save the pickle fingers are simply too good we're not going to the four buying lands yet instead we're going to the sewers cool it's a big long maze with no graces and a bunch of poop on the floor but i know my way through it, it takes about six minutes to get all the way to the bottom where we can fight moog but without a second phase i don't like moog's second phase and this build has no status effects so it's basically just an easier fight stick to the right side and practice our spacing for the harder fight later the cloth lick is a great way to punish the very hard to punish sprinkler attack now the path is unlocked to another finger item though i think i made a mistake see so far we've been serving the two fingers and when we try to add three more fingers the game seems to think that's too much and it starts squeezing us out basically it's pointing the middle finger at us We hit light load right before picking up something heavy and before falling to our death. The goal here is the frenzied fingerprint shield, which is at the bottom here. I've done this plenty of times. I have a route. It works fine. Normally, we don't really die at all. But someone who will remain nameless told me there was a different way to go down for the shield. So I looked up a new route and uh, tried to do that. I believed them. They're not stupid for thinking it was a different path. I was stupid for listening to chat. I know more than you. All right. Don't backseat, kids. Literally no streamer enjoys it, and I've never been in a stream that didn't have a rule against backseating. It's so wild that people still do that. Add 10 minutes and 8 deaths to the run, but at least now we have the fingerprint stone shield. From the description, part of the tomb of an ancient god, the readerless fingers relayed their message through these imprints, said to be the very seeds from which Frenzy first sprouted. So this is one of the first things Frenzy came from? Yeah, I buy that. That little gravity puzzle is maddening. Also, it's so heavy it pushes us from light load to heavy load. Until we throw on the Erd Tree favor plus one, but yeah, we gotta start cranking endurance a little more to make this work. For Biden land, all this talk of fingering is a great reminder that spicy jobs are real jobs and if you want to keep spicy jobs safer and prevent human rush hour the best way to do it is to legalize and unionize those spicy jobs bell bearing three in the mountaintops of the giants so let's hop back to altus for the bell bearing two and then we can crank the shield up to plus 18 right away it gives it an 83 percent guard boost which is absolutely bananas what's bananas about it is that's still not really enough to make a shield good spell enjoyers you're catching a break today it's time for the shield enjoyers to take the heat that shield isn't keeping you safe anymore it's not dark souls 3 bosses have combos and even with cranked up endurance it's still going to carve through your stamina best case scenario you don't have enough stamina to counter attack worst case scenario you have a guard break and are more vulnerable to damage than normal and the boss still has more attacks coming you'll beat bosses faster and learn their patterns better if you spare yourself the equip load and just press circle maybe use that equip load to get heavier armor on anyway let's hit the fire giant's toes with our fingers who would win in that fight well in phase two we get our three stooges moment and crit the eyeball with the finger but flicking the eye later is so much better and then begins the jank curse ball one explodes stunning us to get hit by ball two which kills the horse then we get shot before we can stand up torrent's hp should scale with yours this is ridiculous but i guess it's kind of my fault for ignoring the balls while we were fingering you don't want to do that next time he kills our horse twice then stun locks us into the fire while the menu is asking if we want to summon a horse yeah i want to summon the horse that's why i hit the horse button can't remember the last time Fire Giant was a problem, and like, he isn't really a problem, we just had some bad luck. Temp 3 goes fine, we're moving on. We slipped off a cliff in Fair Missoula. The game just wants me dead today. This has nothing to do with the finger or shield, this is pure hatred from the game. God damn it, I don't know what it is about your face, but I want to deliver one of these right in your suck hole. Is there anything I can do to work on that? No, so you not wouldn't... really. Godskins with Bernie and Theralina, but I fudged up my order and putting on the flame fortification and then summoning Theralina. So we only have one flick. Still fine. We're just slowly beating up the noble while Bernie solos the apostle. He really is great. Theralina doesn't heal us while there are no godskins and we're not at full health. I just wanted to say thanks.
Charged attacks are pulling us through and it's time to admit something. The charged heavy is better than the flick. It does 20% more stance pressure. It comes out a little faster, has less dead frames. You can activate it faster for less stance pressure if you need to, and it does more damage than the flick. There isn't as much range and it doesn't knock people over, but unless you're trying to push someone on their butt, which most bosses can't be pushed on their butt, you should just use the charge attack. Except Big Flick is funny. I'm okay admitting that I'm doing something not because it's optimal, but just because I like it. If someone were to say to me, the Flick is worse than a charged attack, I'd say yes. And that doesn't hurt my feelings at all because I know you're right and I just like it anyway. Does everyone understand what I'm saying here? That just because something isn't as useful as something else, it's not a personal attack on you or your character for enjoying it. There may be certain situations where one thing is better than another, but if it's only those specific and few situations, it's probably worse than the alternative. And you can just use the less optimal thing anyway because you like it. Everyone's understanding what I'm saying here, right? Message! I'm running all around to do Alex Quest to boost the damage of the Claw Flick by 15% with Jar Shard. Axe Talisman boosts charge attacks by 15%, and you can grab it in Limgrave, right next to a Physic tier that also boosts it. Claw Flick is funny, but it's not as good as Charged Heavies. Still better than almost all spells, though. Boom Roasted. On the bird run, the lightning keeps spawning on the narrow part of the bridge we have to jump across. That's fun. But then we get our Somber 10 for maximum finger power just before Malakath, and surely this fight will go fine. We have a 100% physical shield and a huge guard boost. That should rock for the Beast Clergy, except even with the the tallest, heaviest shield in the game, he has a bunch of attacks that go over our head. Theralina isn't healing or doing much of anything, really. What, what would you say you do here? Anyway, Malekith gutter balls us off the cliff the first time. All of our deaths are weird today. Second attempt, fuck the shield, just hammer away. Now, if you think we haven't had weird stuff, Malekith jumps on the column and does his AoE attack up there, falling down, preventing us from dodging or getting behind it. That's a new one. We get the crit and then just gotta whack him one more time. Erdtree is officially burned. Capital is ashen. Time to take things serious. And if you want to get serious with a finger, it's time to put an Elden Ring on it. Gideon time probably should have gotten magic fortification going, but I don't need it. I flick, 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 and flick. He doesn't really have a chance to heal, just fully bullied. The timer is on though, can we kill Godfrey? I don't think it is a matter of time though. I think it's a matter of survivability. Our armor is paper thin, the ritual shield is doing what it can, but Godfrey has combos. It might seem like we should just bust out that super heavy shield, but I've done this with a shield before and it's not great. He kind of just tears through your stamina or hits you with overhead attacks, yeah. We got bodied. Next time, Theralina is healing while we're at full health. Boy, you just love wasting most of my magic, don't ya? I screwed up the spacing at phase two, so we got hit by the daddy grabby right away. And then we got hit by the daddy grabby again, because I was greeting. 60 vigor's nothing to sleep on. Even if you got booty defenses, you get to live. Radagon can be a problem, but ton of holy damage, especially if you get grabbed. You know, I wish people would quit doing that. It's mean sure we could go get some holy resistance from the divine fortification but that's so far away i'll just get hit less kind of a downside to these spells if you want to get the most out of them you have to take hits big stance pressure carries us through to the elden beast on the second try i'm still using the flick it's not as good but i don't care also i didn't realize it's not as good until i started writing the script so you know, didn't know it yet. Today, the Elden Beast is in full runaway mode, but it ends up working out, delaying the stance break until just before Elden Stars comes out, which means Elden Stars doesn't come out. It's like Bugs Bunny putting his finger in Elmer Fudd's gun. Elden Beast is bodied. We have the Elden Ring. Now we just gotta get the rest of these membies. Yeah, Fia's champs are next. Somehow we didn't kill them. Super funny. Claw one-shots the Twink guy in phase three, and then we just poise boys through with Claw Flick uh, the rest of the time. Fingering three guys at the same time is a little hard, but once we stretch it out, it's fine. Time to run around Lernia through the Carrion study. I'll then forget to quit out for the Perceptor until we're right next to them. Why? Just quit out. Do this at home too. If this is your first video and you didn't know you can do that, now you know you can do that. Then some hugs. Wish we could quit out to speed these up. You kind of can. With the map, you can just skip the slow standing up animation. Fortis Axe could be an issue. Lightning Fortification would be helpful, but we're fine. The elemental defenses on the robes aren't terrible, and if we just stick to the toes, we can avoid most of the physical damage. Dashing R2s are covering the spread really nicely. Placidious Axe, I should definitely 
definitely get lightning fortification for, but fun fact, if Corrin is dead, you just don't get to get that anymore. His bell bearing doesn't have it. I checked. Oh no. I get hit by so many questionable hitboxes. Sometimes his body is just a hitbox. And not like when he's dive tackling you. When he does the wing attack with his left side, the right side of his body is a hitbox now. That's what killed us. Cool. Also, I'm not summoning Theralina because, you know, why bother? What's she gonna do? Best strategy is just fingering the back of the tail and it decides today I wasn't close enough to the wall to avoid the Omega laser. I swear to God, this run has been truly cursed since we picked up that finger shield. Play it careful, don't let the game jank, and we win. Detour time, we're swapping great runes for better bars, though we won't swap the rune arc until we die. Now imagine the finger in the castle's hole. There we can pound Niles boys first, then pound him. While he hits us with all the frostbite, believe it or not, these nun robes aren't very insulated. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> big finger, big win. Old man succumbs to one big finger, and then we're in the consecrated snowfield, baby. Hawflick is so good against the Penguin Noble. I really love this against NPCs. I think this is 100% the most consistent NPC tool I have used. Moog goes so well. It's really nice to have something go well for once. Stick to the right side, punish things with the flick, should use the charge attack, but oh well. Big crits, big damage, plenty of flasks to chug a lugga. I really think the practice against Sewer Moog helped too. First try win, hell yes. Liturgical Town is eventful because Adobe on my computer updated halfway through. Don't have footage of that because I don't have like Adobe set up in my OBS thing. So I just didn't get to see the screen, but I could hear things. I was trying to put my shield up and just kind of wing it with audio cues. Watching it back, I'm shocked I did so well. We got right up next to the archer. Then we died and I fixed the computer. That was a tactical death to swap the rune arc, actually. I'm a genius. Hallowed Tree goes fine. Probably should have put magic fortification on for a Loretta, but I forget things. Theralina does nothing. Doesn't have to. I just like spending time with my sister. Oh, wait. Theralina, Loretta ship? They're both a carrier manor. I like that after Loretta gets over her crush on Melania, Theralina realizes her tarnished has been there the whole time. Get on it, AO3 riders. I'm checking tags in one week. Elphiel shouldn't be a problem. It's Elphiel and I have my pathing down. We make it to the Rotter Fall. Our health bar is covering half the screen. That's not gonna kill us. Honestly, as long as we don't fall to our death, we'll be fine. As long as we don't get shot with ropes, we'll be fine. Fighting literal blood Satan? No deaths. Getting through a room with like seven spiders? Three deaths. Very cool. One final boss and only one more finger for the title drops. Let's get this, gamers. Surely Melania would never jank us, right? Not if we jank her first. I quickly figure out we can flick to charged attack to an R2, and that'll break her stance. You can repeat that infinitely as she just stands up. Just flick again and R1 and hope she doesn't super armor. Her moves with super armor are ducky dance, dash to the left, dash to the right, uppercut, dash attack from a distance, piercing dash, totally separate move, different dash attack. Whatever, we make it to phase two anyway and start the cycle. This is gonna be a short section. Oh, except the Rotterfowl dance. Now we're rotted. I probably shouldn't try to fingerprint shield through it. Sure, we block all the physical damage, but she gets to heal so much more and she also gets to rot us. So yeah, not good there. First rotter foul death. Attempt two, she just won't stop hitting that super armor button. Also, fun fact, if you get a stance break when she's super armoring, like if you build up enough stance pressure and then the hit you hit her with is during the super armor, her stance pressure resets to zero. Oh, also the ducky dance has overhead shots that go over the shield anyway. You would think big physical shield would be perfect for the ducky dance. Nope, kind of sucks actually. We finally get our first break at like 30% of her remaining HP, but she super armors out of a combo and I die shortly after because I greeted in. Third try, we're just, trying to trade in for that first hit then we get ducky you also put her in ducky range when she goes to about a quarter health so that's after like one good combo with the flick and she can just decide to do that at any time and then your combo string is over i think we build up like 200 points of pressure and she just doesn't break because of the super armor timing fourth try something else shield crash will turn into a big train and it kind of works but it leaves us open if she dashes to the side once she dashes to the side all the time why wouldn't she? Gives her super armor and prevents her stance from being broken. I'd do that all the time too. Phase two this time, we don't get rotted while guarding the ducky dance. That's nice, but we still die. Hope she enjoys getting 10% of her health back because I want the shield to contribute to the fight. Next time, get grabbed. Yikes.
Okay, so this is a question that will come in early in the video. Uh, there's no reason to address it now, and I know nobody will actually hear this before they ask, why aren't we using the fingerprint night set for more defense? And it's simple. We already used that for the Vike run, and this is funnier. Aren't we laughing, gamers? Aren't we laughing at the funny bad defense of Finger Lady? I'm white knuckling it this time, but we do get to phase two again. I wish two fingers had a ranged spell option we could hit her with in the onion, but we just gotta wait. It's time for another Roger Fowl dance. How many is this? I lost count because I can only count to 10. That's how many fingers I have. Switch up the strategy. Charge attacks are taking too long to get in. Let's try a jump attack maybe. It's not as much pressure and it's not enough. Or she's hitting the super armor button. I really don't know. Bit of both, bit of both. Finally far enough away to avoid the ducky dance. That's nice. It's weird to say I'm getting better at this fight. I know it seems like I'm not getting better at this fight, but I really am. It's just like a really rough fight. We make it to phase two. Instant robber foul dance. Very cool. Flick combo works well the next attempt. That's really nice. We stance break her right before the phase transition, so no pressure to start. Oh well, it's not like we were gonna get a stance break with all our super armoring anyway. Oh, phase two, every jump attack has super armor. And the stance pressure can fully reset as she does attack of the clones, because you can't hit her without arrows or something. And if you shoot her during the attack of the clones, the clones kill you. So yeah, it fully recovers. We die to the rotter foul dance. Again. Next try, more flick luck. We get her into the corner, which gives us plenty of time to get in with the charged attacks. So phase two, we should knock her down pretty god dang fast, right? Not with the super armor kick. How did I forget the kick when I was talking about super armor attacks? It's her favorite move. Get her in the corner again, but she hits the clones button. So press circle, baby. My favorite thing to do in a boss fight is press circle and run away for 30 seconds. Finally, we get to the second onion. I'm not sure we've gotten this far yet. Flick, charged heavy, but we're kicked and flurried. One more hit gets the stance break then just flick and jump barely doesn't do it we are low as hell on flasks and trade in for a hit to get her even closer to the edge with our finger one more hit and we get the big finish wow at six hours and 57 minutes we beat 32 bosses and died 30 times i'm shocked that we kept the kd ratio positive with all the weird janky deaths and the terrible armor it ends up being behind the samurai starting gear and it's pretty clear that it's the bad armor that held us back and the big heavy shield Kind of both in the same way. If you invest in 40 endurance and you're using a hammer, don't waste your equip load on a big rock that you're not using. Oh, and don't spend 90% of your MP bar on Theralina. I've defended her before, but now I've come to realize that all the builds she plays support for do terribly. She just doesn't do her job as a Spirit Ash, which is distracting the boss. Ironically, every other Spirit Ash helps you heal better than the healing Spirit Ash, because at least they take aggro so you can chug a flask. Ringed Finger is a very cool weapon. That's very funny. Just know that Claw Fleck is really only good against small stuff, and you shouldn't waste your 40 endurance on a big rock you're not using. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We have another big heckin' chonker on the way. Join the Patreon to support the channel. It's the best place to do it. And follow us on Twitch to watch these runs live. We're doing something stupid right now. I just know it.